You know, the one thing that's good about having multiple email addresses is I can always have one email address that I use for my actual uh, accounts where I'm using software and then the other one for purposes of doing software demos. We're taking a look at how to use Trello for your business, how to use Trello for an accounting or bookkeeping practice or any practice for that matter, any business. It doesn't have to be a practice. It could be a business. A practice is really just another word for a business that we use in the accounting and bookkeeping industry. So it's really all the same in the end, and I'll stop rambling now. So we're looking at Trello, T-R-E-L-L-O, sort of like Jello, but with a T-R instead of a J, Trello.com. And it's a very unique approach, I think, towards project management because of the layout. It's very visually appealing, I think, is what it comes down to, probably more so than any other project management application that I've used or seen. So when you first log in, as you can see, I have a bare bones account here where I've played around making some other videos on this product. And I think we've used this in a hangout or two here and there on Friday mornings. When you first go in, you can create a new organization. And we have a, a dialogue sort of going on, which is what inspires me to make this video. Even though I woke up not feeling well, I, I do this for you. I get out of bed, I roll out of bed in the morning, and I make videos just for you. It's all for you. So I rolled out of bed and I said, I have to make this video on Trello because some of my colleagues, some of my beloved colleagues uh, were talking about this and, and, and had questions about how to do some of the stuff that there is to do in here. So first question was, how do I lay it out? How do I use it? How do I structure my Trello? There's organizations, there's boards, there's lists, and there's cards, right? Those are the primary elements within Trello. Organizations, I'll say it again, boards lists, and then cards, okay? So the question was, all right, how do I set this up? Well, in my opinion, the way I would do it, the way I do do it, is an organization is just that, it's an organization. So I'm gonna create one organization for my own organization, and then for any clients that I wanna use this for, I'm gonna create another organization for that client, right? So there'll be an organization created. You know what, let's just do it, let's create an organization. And we'll call it School of Book eeping.com my stuff create that was hard right so now i have an organization called school of bookkeeping.com and within it you can see i can create boards let's go back to main trello so now you can see i have this organization so let's say i wanted to create one for client x right i had a board for client x but i never created an organization so we'll create an organization for client x and then we'll move that board into it for stuff about this client. Boom, done. Now let's go back to Trello main. Let's go into this board I created for client X. We're gonna go over here to menu. Okay, and then we're going to uh, do, 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 do. We can copy the board, but I wanna move the board. So let's see how to move the board. All we actually need to do is change the organization. So we go to additional settings, change organization, and now we have client X. And then the question is, do we wanna make it visible to the organization? That means if we've added members to the organization, having this checked off means it will be visible to everyone in the organization. And as you're gonna see in a minute, I can add people to an organization, which means they'll have access to any board that I've made visible to that whole organization. And or I can simply add people just to a board within, an, you know, so it doesn't matter that it's within an organization. If I add a person only to that board, they'll only be able to see that board and not any other board in that organization, unless I've added them to the organization. And then the question is, do I want to allow any org member to join? So it could be that I don't, if I make it visible, I still can preclude org members from joining unless I give them permission or I check this off and that means that anyone who wants to can join. So I change that, let's go back to Trello main and now I have client X and there's client X within, uh, the board client X within the organization client X. So let's change this board name now to client X general info and to do's right we'll just call it that rename this way it's clear when i'm talking about the organization client x versus the board because now i can create all kinds of boards for client x but let's start here one thing that i think is very important because i'm all about the visual is uh come over here and change the background now some of these things are only available to gold members 
right? So if you want like photos or patterns and textures or custom in my own boards for uh, Nerd Enterprises, I, I have a gold account. And you should get a gold account because you can actually have it for free for like a year. All you have to do is invite others to join Trello. And they don't even have to sign up and pay. As long as you send an email to invite somebody into Trello, which you're going to do with your clients probably, if they're not already in Trello, then you get credit for having recruited one person and you can get free gold uh Trello membership for up to 12 months. In other words, if, if, as long as you refer one person a month for 12 months, then then you'll have it for free for a year. Then after that, it's not expensive. I don't remember what it costs, but I remember thinking, wow, that's not expensive. As I sip my morning coffee. So next thing you're going to want to know. So let's change the background. Let's make it a little purdy. Right, since this is a school of bookkeeping, we'll make it green like a chalkboard. Now, the next thing you're going to want to know is how do I email stuff to my board, right? Or, or you might even be wondering, can I? The answer is yes. And, and now that you know the answer is yes, the question is how. So when you click into the menu, it's going to remember the last place you sort of left off there. So you got to click up here where it says back. And then you're going to go here to email to board settings. And notice it creates this crazy long email address. So you're going to copy the whole thing. And then notice down here you have some settings. You can change the email. You can generate a new one. You can email this address to yourself so that you have it in your inbox. You can also choose, first of all, which list the new uh, email will come into. Right, so I, it's usually the first one by default, but you can change it. Just click on it and choose any other. And also, which position will the new card go in? Because when you email to the board, it's going to create a new card. Do you want it at the bottom or the top? Right, I generally prefer to have it at the top, especially if the list is long, because if the list is very long, then you're going to have to scroll down to find it. And so I like the new stuff coming in at the top. But that's up to you. So you have to decide if you know if you like the top or the bottom. That sounded bad. So anyway, um, this is the deal. So I'm going to copy this. And here's another recommendation is let's go into my uh, email contact manager. I paused the recording for a second because I didn't want you to see confidential emails and stuff that I have in my inbox on my way into my contact manager. We use Google Apps for business, so we're using essentially the Gmail client. But notice what I did. I went in and I created a new contact. I called it Client X Trello General Board, and I pasted the email address for that board in here. Of course, what that's going to enable me to do is just call this up from within my email program. So if you're using Outlook, whatever you're using, just add the, uh, the email address for that board in as a contact and name it uh, with a name that makes it clear that this is the, you know, you're sending an email to that particular Trello board. Remember, you're going to have multiple boards. So, you know, make sure you're pretty specific like I've done here where it says client X Trello general board. And now if I create a new email, let's do that. So I start typing client X. Of course, it comes up because it's in my contacts. Testing my board email settings. Hi, mom. And send. And let's watch. Just watch carefully. It's cool. It's like watching a fireworks show on July 4th. Okay, the second test worked. You just saw it come in here while I was uh, fiddling around with the menus. Not sure why the first one didn't go through, but uh, now that we got the second test, let's let's do one more because now it starts to get fun. Client X, uh, follow up items. Don't forget to do stuff for them. And let's uh, hit send. And then we'll go over here and we'll wait. We'll wait patiently. And it will show up. It will show up. For sure. Meanwhile, once it's in here, this is how it comes through, and the subject becomes the name of the card. So you can, of course, change that, you know, give it a more appropriate title, perhaps. Maybe the subject is an appropriate title. Um, needed for this week's 
meeting. And now, so now we get in a little bit to, you know, how this is all going to work. And notice in the background it updated. By the way, amazing mobile app for this too. It works really, it's, it's nice and clean. It looks almost exactly like it does here and really easy to use. Uh, each card has a description. So of course my email signature came in. We can get rid of that. And this would be the general description. So a card can be used as a task. The card itself can be the task that needs to be completed. You can assign a due date. You can assign it to a member so that that person knows that they're responsible for getting it done. And you can, you can do all kinds of things. Or a card can become a checklist, right? If there's a bunch of things you need to do, maybe you have a card for all of today's to-do items, right? And then that way within that, you create a checklist to do today. and then add it, right, item one, item two, and so on. Let's go back and update this description. Let's just get rid of that email signature. Um, and here you go. So this is, you know, this is how um, you can create a checklist very easily. Uh, I'm noticing in the background that it looks like our first one came through, testing my board email settings, right? So that came through. So there might be a delay. It depends on your mail server. It depends what's going on at, on Trello side of things. It might be a minute before the card comes in, but rest assured, it'll come in. This one finally came in and I've got a, uh, a third one probably that's gonna come in within the next few minutes. So you get the idea. A card can be any number of things. So again, the basic structure. I have my organizations. Within each organization, I have boards and a board can be a general sort of topical area. And then within each board, I have my lists. So the lists can be used for any number of things. They can be used for subject matter, or they can be used for workflow, which is kind of what you see I have laid out here. Let's say this is a bookkeeping client. I have this first list of things that I'm doing, right? Then I might have one for weekly tasks, one for monthly tasks, and one for things that are completed. So when I finish February bookkeeping, I can drag it over here to where it says done. And by the way, you can click and drag on the screen to easily scroll right and left because as you can see as you're adding lists it's going to scroll kind of uh, potentially a long ways right or left so that my friends is your intro and overview to Trello and how you might use it for your business or your practice or whatever you want to use it for uh, remember the main thing is you have organizations within each organization you have boards you can create any number of boards within each board you have lists you can create any number of lists within each list you have a card and you can create any number of cards within a list and and then you can structure your list like I said based on workflow or based on subject matter there's so much more we can get into but I would have to record a two-hour video to cover it all so my friends play around with Trello ask me your questions post your comments and questions on the video right here on YouTube where you might be watching this or check the description of the video for a link over to the blog at toolegittoaudit.com where you can actually read what I've written as well as recorded as well as watch what I've recorded, and then you can post your comments and questions there. I look forward to getting them. I look forward to answering them. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.